Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about the structures of human eye. For better understanding, we can divide it into two parts. One is what are the walls or layers of the eyeballs and uh, what are the structures present inside. So let's discuss the layer first. Basically, it has three layers, outermost part or protective layer, middle layer or nutritive part which provide nutrition and inner layer or sensory pigmented part. Here in this diagram this total part is outer layer. Posterior 5 6 part from this portion to this portion all the layer all this layer is called sclera which is very tough membrane. Here, this transparent anterior 1 6 part is called cornea. So, the outermost layer mostly consists of two parts sclera and cornea, which protects the inner layer and let the light comes into the eyeball. Inside the outermost layer, there is a highly vascular layer which brings oxygen and nutrition for the other layers. It is present inside and posterior to the outer part. This is called choroid. Now the anterior portion of this vascular layer becomes thickened. This thickened part is called ciliary body. And just in the middle of the ciliary body there is a vascular diaphragm. This is called iris. So, the posterior most part of the middle layer is called choroid body and the anterior triangle shaped thickened area is called ciliary body and in the middle of the ciliary body there is a vascular diaphragm which is called iris. Now the most important part is the inner layer. Only this layer can convert the electromagnetic energy into electrochemical signals. This layer is called retina. If you enlarge this portion, you will see the retina has two parts. One highly pigmented layer and a neural layer. This highly pigmented part is firmly attached with the choroid part. Now the interesting point you should remember rods and cones are not present in the pigmented layer they are actually present in the neural layer you must be wondering so why it is hyperpigmented and what's the use of hyperpigmentation well see when light comes into our eyeball it should get absorbed first uh, shouldn't get uh, reflected otherwise image will be destroyed as we know highly pigmented area absorb light better than white or poorly pigmented area. That's why this inner layer or inner retinal layer is highly pigmented. Let's enlarge this area. Here it is sclera then choroid and this pigmented layer and just above the pigmented layer there is neural layer which contains rods and cones and bipolar cells etc. So what are rods and cones? They are special type of transducers. You know what is transducer? Well it is a special entity which can convert one type of energy to another type of energy. You know light is electromagnetic energy. When light fall on the rods and cones rods and cones get activated and produce action potential. This action potential is electrochemical energy. So rods and cones basically convert the electromagnetic energy into electrochemical energy. This action potential is now transferred to central nervous system for processing so that we can see an object. Now this pigmented layer covering all the choroid layer and extending forward just behind the ciliary body and then behind the iris and now finally stops here. It is not going beyond this area. So it is actually 
absent in front of the iris now one important point although pigmented layer extend up to the iris but this neural layer or rods and cones do not extend up to the ciliary body or iris or you can say this layer is not faithful with this underlying pigmented layer let me draw another diagram this is sclera and this is cornea so this portion is corneo scleral junction and this is the coronal section actually rods and cones extends from backward to forward and ends somewhere between this middle of these two points so what does it mean only this portion of retina is sensitive to light and the portion anterior to this part is not sensitive to light here i should mention another important part which is called lens lens it helps the light pass into the eyeball and focus properly on the retina lens has special ligaments which are attached with the ciliary body and hold the lens in position these ligaments or elastic fibers which hold the lens in position are called suspensory ligaments or junules now behind this lens and junules the cavity of eyeball is filled with a jelly like material which is called vitrea seuma and the fluid which fills the anterior compartment just anterior to lens is called aqueous seuma so when light is entering into the eyeball first it has to pass through the cornea then through the aqueous seuma then through the lens and then through the vitrea seuma and eventually falls on the retina which finally converted into action potential and goes to the cns through the optic nerve that's all guys if you like this video please comment share and don't forget to subscribe thank you